before we get over there on that milling machine. Let's just have a conversation to to clarify just kind of observations of these old mixers, carburetors, if you wish. I have spent a little time building these compensating valves. Also, the compensating valve slide pin. And a good, a good rule of advice is to build the parts out of the same material that they were built in from the factory. As you note, know, these stainless steel stud bolts and the brass washer and nut, that is a very, very bad idea. Just do not do that. That's a very bad idea. And there is a reason that I make that statement. We will talk about that sometime in the future. But uh, just kind of show and tell, this compensating valve here, you can see that most likely the spring was, it had more tension on one side or the other, and it wore this compensating valve, and probably in the shaft that this one was in was wore equally amount. So it had a lot of side play. And when you have side play like that right there, that that means that the compensating valve has been been coming off seat sideways. It's not good. If you have one in this condition, it's time to replace it. And it's a, it's a good sliding fit. I'm going to say maybe four thousandths clearance, maybe four e thousandths mixer tops. There is several variations. This is one one variation of uh, three. This this had three uh, kerosene, water, gasoline. When you run only gas in the engine and don't put kerosene in it, then this becomes your primary needle valve. This would have been kerosene in the fuel tank. This would have been gasoline in the in the reservoir over here, it's uh, it's gasoline. the The way this thing worked is this this the way these chambers are. This big chamber back here, that would have been your gasoline chamber. That had a drain here. This would have been the needle valve. The uh, there is an opening. In this area right here, if you put too much gas in there, it will spill over and go back into the kerosene tank over there. That's the way this works. The, the, the kerosene or gasoline would come in this from the fuel pump, fill up this reservoir, and it would spill over this little milled out dam here, which is the correct height of that fuel bowl. It would spill over, maintaining that level of fuel at all times, it would spill over and drain back to the fuel tank. The way you would do this is, let's get a, let's get a different, uh, let's get a different mixer here, and let's just use this one. The, this would have been full of gasoline. And that amount of gas, Aline, when you start the engine on gas, when it ran that amount, then you would switch it over to kerosene and the engine would be hot enough to run it, to fire it. it they were kind of hard to start on kerosene. The water valve was for, uh, I'm going to leave that with your homework, what the water uh, in the kerosene engine accomplished. Let's just leave that for homework and get on with this. But uh, 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 the, this one here had a good seat in the top. One of the very few. And when you assemble this all together with the correct spring and you 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 
And this this has been changed over to the gasoline type compensating valve with the two holes. And when you put pressure on that compensating valve, you, uh, you can tell immediately that the spring is holding the compensating valve on seat. It's making contact, but it's very light. It's really easy to go away, and then it, you know, it, it's got enough tension to where it reseats quite readily. The uh, uh, let's set that aside. Before we do that, before we do that, let me show you something. These two, this this is another one of the same type. Gas water cursing three type. This is an older version. Uh, one of the way you know that is it does not have a threaded filler cap. This one had a factory threaded filler cap. Just a couple of variations. The um, this was in the last video we did. And I think I made comment that this was a, a running engine, and when I took it apart, it, it has no spring. It has no spring in there. And this was one that, that was required to run with a closed choke plate. And to take that out, let's take it out. This is the first time. I did loosen it up. I loosened it up so it will be ready, but I have not seen it. So let's open this up and see what is in this one and this engine was running without a spring solely on the choke plate the inside of this is not rusted but it's gummed up quite badly the oh there's a, there is a let's get this out of there there is the uh, and it is it is the uh, newer type with the two holes and there's that washer fell out. It had a washer in there for some reason. That's not original. And if you can see, I'm not going to drag, drag out the micrometer, but you can see that that hole in one side of this compensating valve is worn almost as paper thin on one side looking at it. It's quite egg shaped. And the corresponding wire on this slide rod here is oh it's it's quite a bit um we're talking a lot in there and and you can see oh that's oh that's uh that's uh, way under more than a 16th plate this would have not been good by no means this would have not been mean that that's at this point this is scrap it needs to be replaced and we will and i will do that but looking down in yonder Looking down in in that in that in yonder, that's not too bad of a seat. Uh, I'm going to be facing off, so I will go ahead and touch this one up. But that's that's about the best one I've seen in some while. And it's pretty good. And the reason that I did not clean this head up is the engine. The engine that this mixer goes on is uh, it's original, so I did not want to to change the patina here. We've talked about that before. 